Okay, everyone, this is a video I've been waiting to make for a long time, and it's going to be celebrity autographs, but basically celebrities who are in the music field, more or less, you know, uh, people associated uh, with the music field, some Beatles-related autographs, but not just Beatles, other uh, music celebrities, too. I'm going to start by, well, I guess I'll start by showing you stuff that I have on the wall right now, and then I'll come back here. Okay, this is a Ringo Starr autograph, of course, that I've got. I got it from eBay in, uh, I think, around the year 2000, 2001. Uh, I got it off eBay. It came with a certificate of authenticity, and, I mean, everybody knows that's Ringo's signature. You can just tell. And I like that it's a full name, Ringo Starr, not just Ringo by itself. Uh, there's an autograph of Pete Best. I didn't have the fortune of meeting Pete Best, unfortunately. I got this from my record store. And uh, I had a couple of opportunities to meet Pete uh, at a Beatle Fest and a store signing back a few several years ago. And I uh, regret that I missed those opportunities. But I hope Pete comes around again. I'd like to try to get an autograph on my own, maybe get a personalized one. Uh, that's Frida Kelly. I got her autograph at a Beatle Fest. She was the uh, publisher of, president of the Beatles Monthly Book, the fan club. Okay, at the last Beatle Fest uh, this past March, uh, I got uh, Klaus Vormann's autograph down there in the cloud. He signed the Live Peace in Toronto album. And I had already purchased this with Alan White's signature on it. And I, you know, I, I uh, figured the person I bought this from was reputable, so I knew that Alan White was probably authentic, and I knew I was going to go to the Beatle Fest, so I figured I could get Klaus to sign it. Now, I met Yoko Ono twice in 1994. Um, unfortunately, back in 1994, I was not into vinyl yet. <laughs> I was still into CDs. So I could have had her sign an album. I met her twice in 94. And I had her sign an index card. Uh, so I just recently I put this in with a frame with Double Fantasy. I would much rather have signed the album. But I got a couple of more signatures over here. From 2014, the Beatles Fest. First we have Denny Lane up there. And Steve Holly. And Lawrence Juber I got here in 2017. I almost didn't remember I had it because it's a dark signature on a <laughs> dark suit. There's my Paul and Linda autographs. I uh, got these in 1993 when Paul was in New York City to do Saturday Night Live for Valentine's Day. I uh, got this one personally from Linda. She signed this, you know, right in front of me. Paul's signature, unfortunately, uh, I didn't get it directly. I waited for him with a bunch of other fans all day, and he came in and out of the hotel several times and just said, hello, how are you, things like that, but would not sign. Finally, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, John Hamill, his assistant at the time, took all of the materials that we had, uh, you know, what, photo albums, uh, records, tour book here in my case still wasn't into record albums then <laughs> unfortunately and Paul supposedly and it looks like it's his signature signed these from inside the hotel then they were all returned from us and Paul came out later and waved at everybody and said okay everybody got one you all got it good so uh, I think it's authentic right after that when our uh, autographs were returned to us Paul came out of the hotel it was a freezing cold February day he, you can understand why he didn't want to stand out like the rest of us to sign. And uh, he signed one more autograph for a boy that had missed it. He didn't get his autograph. And I'm standing there leaning in on the right trying to get my picture in there. <laughs> and uh, turns out the kid who got the autograph wasn't really a fan per se. He was just a decoy. His dad was an autograph dealer. So uh, he was using his son to get an autograph. Okay, and here we are. Now, some of these, you know, I've, I've gotten myself, and some of them I did not get myself. 
So uh, it's always better if you get them in person, right? But it doesn't always work out that way, unfortunately. Okay, uh, I'll start with this. This is uh, Mickey Dolan's. I got this at the uh, Beetle Fest in 2012. Mickey was one of the guests there, so I got this uh, particular autograph in person. Uh, also, uh, I used to, in the 90s, I used to go around uh, hanging out at places where celebrities were looking for autographs, and I'd bring blank index cards with me because I never knew who was going to be there. And uh, if somebody was there who I was interested in somewhat, or I just would use a uh, an index card. In this case, this is Robert Palmer from 1994. Not really a Robert Palmer fan, but uh, I happened to be hanging out at a hotel and he was driving by in a, a car and uh, he was a passenger and the window was open and uh, I knew it was him or somebody told me it was him. So I got it. Signature there. Same thing happened with Kenny Rogers. This is a Kenny Rogers autograph. I, any of these autographs that I've, I've gotten with a blue Sharpie was a big mistake. I'll never use blue Sharpie again because, in this case, look, they bleed into the paper for some reason. The black is okay, but I don't know what's with the blue. So, that was Kenny Rogers. Now, recently I bought a uh, album collection by The Shadows, and one of the albums... It's just complete coincidence. We're, we're autographed on the back, which is already nice enough, but they're all signed to Joe, uh, if you notice. And I, uh, because the person who got that, I forget what his name was. I think it was Yossi. It was uh, Israeli for Joseph, which, you know, is my name. So it says to Joe, Bruce Welch, Brian Bennett, sorry, and Hank Marvin on the bottom. So I like Hank Marvin a lot. A lot and it's, I got a to Joe autograph. So that's pretty cool. It just I just lucked out that this happened to be signed and uh, to Joe nonetheless. All right. So um, the next one got some photographs too to go with some of these. So one time uh, I was hanging out at uh, the NBC building in Manhattan and Carly Simon came by and I didn't have anything to get signed. I didn't even know she was going to be there. So at least I got this photograph of myself and Carly Simon, which was really nice to get. This was, I think, 1993, something like that. Let's hold on a minute here. All right, the story with Joan Jett was I was fortunate enough to find out where her manager lived. And at the time, lived kind of locally to where I was. This is a 1983, so it goes back a ways. And I sent some, you know, normal letters to the house several times. Nothing crazy, obviously. Uh, and eventually, you know, Joan Jett sent me first this autograph photo in the mail, which was cool. And I recognized the handwriting uh, right away. And she indicated on the bottom there are two arrows on the sides as if to flip over the picture. So I flipped it over. She had written on here a little note. Sorry for no letter, way too busy to write. I hope to see you someday. Sorry this has to be short, keep dancing. So uh, this was in December of 1983. Just about this time, I think it was right before New Year's Eve actually, I got this in, in the mail. And uh, I was thrilled enough just to have that, but I still wanted to meet her in person. And I had my opportunity three months after in March of 84 when uh, Joan was being honored at a club. Uh, she was going to be appearing to get some kind of award or something. And uh, in March 84, I, I went there. And uh, that's when I got an opportunity to get this autograph, which I'll show you on the wall. Okay, when I finally met Joan Jett in person, it was one of the best meetings I ever had with a celebrity. I met her at a club and she was so excited to meet me she remembered who i was she remembered sending me the letter uh shook my hand violently enthusiastically and she wrote this to joe nice meeting you love joan jet and that was one of the best meetings ever she was uh so happy to meet her fans and you know this was in march of 1984 Okay, well, that was good enough. And like, you know, like I say, she was really fantastic. And what a personable, likable star, you know. 
But she also, that same event, signed this one for me. I was a glutton. I asked for two autographs. So I got this album signed on top of the first one. <laughs> and all the uh, members of the Blackhearts were there at the time. So I had a piece of paper on me. And I, I don't know why I didn't just have them sign the, al the album. What was I thinking? Uh, but anyway, I got Lee Crystal, the drummer, who's now passed on, sadly. And Ricky Bird, the lead guitarist. And the bass player, Gary Ryan. So I got all of them. And, uh, you know, I, uh, from sending uh, letters to the, the manager's house, Kenny Laguna, he came to, to know me pretty well after a while. And uh, he said he'd be happy to let me go backstage at a gig. And he kept true to his word in 1985, February 1985. I got this picture taken backstage with uh, Joan, and I really wish I still had that shirt too. I mean, that's a cool, a cool shirt. So, if the glare is not ruining it, the glorious results of a misspent youth tour. Okay, and uh, one more autograph with Joan on it, which I, I'm pretty sure I have some other ones too. <laughs> uh, this was at a. Uh, the store signing, it was, I forget, it was a, she was in a shopping mall, of all places, signing autographs. This is in uh, 1986, so uh, I've always liked this one. Okay. Um, now, I mentioned a while ago, I showed you a Yoko Ono autograph. I told you I met Yoko Ono twice in 1994. One of them, I had her sign the index card. Well... I also had to sign this, which was just a page out of a book. I found a book and I pulled out a page and there it is. And here's a photo of when I uh, actually met Yoko, one of the times in 1994 outside of Dakota on a windy day. You can see my hair blowing around there. And there's a picture of Linda McCartney back from uh, 1993 in February, a freezing cold February afternoon. I got to meet Two of the Beatle wives, which is nice. I met Victor Spinetti, the actor who was in the Beatles movies, Hard Day's Night, Help, and also Magical Mystery Tour. This was, I think, 1993. 93 or 94. And he signed a page from the Magical Mystery Tour booklet. This was uh, an old album I had that the booklet was falling apart anyway, so I intended to frame this. I'll get to it eventually, like a lot of other things. Okay, I got this. Uh, this is an autograph of Julian Lennon. Um, I didn't get it myself. I bought it at my record store, and it's made out to Barry and Andrea, it looks like. Happy anniversary. Uh, it's in pen, so it's hard to see. It says, to uh, Barry and Andrea... Uh, happy anniversary, Julian Lennon. Love Julian Lennon. So, that's nice. Okay, uh, at one of the Beatle Fests, uh, maybe two different Beatle Fests, I don't know which is which, I got a couple of autographs. I got Denny Lane's again on the Wildlife album here. Wings Wildlife, I got Denny Lane and Denny Sywell. Sorry about the glare, folks. Can't tell how it's coming out. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, from Joan Jett's first band, The Runaways, I got uh, Cherie Curry at uh, the Chilla Theater uh, Expo in New Jersey. And I actually got her a couple of times. This is one of the you know, most proud possessions I have here as a Runaways fan. Uh, I'm going to get ahead of myself here. I've got Cherie Curry over there in the corner. And I've got Sandy West, the drummer, who passed on, sadly. I got the, both Cherie Curry and Sandy West were at the same Chiller Theater Convention. And I got, I'm, I want to say around 2003, 2004. And then Lita Ford I was able to get very happily. Uh... Got her, I think, in ooh, 2000, I don't know, 14, 15, I don't know, 
exactly. Uh, oh, by the way, I, you know, I met Joan Jett so many times uh, that I'd like to meet her one more time to get this signed. Unfortunately, I haven't had that opportunity yet, or I should say I had one opportunity. I saw her in 2015 at a gig, and she waved to everybody and said hi, but she didn't sign autographs that time. So, uh, now here's uh, one that I bought. This is Susie Quattro. I didn't get this myself. I bought this one. Going way back now to 1981, I was at a, a Beatle Fest, and May Pang was there. And, uh, you know, she wasn't a guest or anything. She was just milling about the crowd, and I recognized her, and I had bought this bootleg album, <laughs> Man of the Decade. So I, I had a pen. I don't know if she had a pen. Somebody had a pen, and she gave me a signature on the back of it. Okay, now from 1982, uh, Beatle Fest again. Harry Nielsen was at a fest, and Harry signed this from 82. Back when I met Klaus Vorman earlier this March in uh, 2017, I also uh, asked if he'd sign the Revolver album cover. I mean, you can't have a Klaus Vorman signature without it being on the Revolver cover. Uh, I think in 19, I want to say 1982, at another Beatle Fest, a lot of these were at the Beatle Fest, one of my favorite Wings albums, Lawrence Juber was a guest, and I had him sign his autograph and pen on the back of the back to the egg cover now we're going to go back to hmm i don't know i want to say 2014 fest for beetle fans i don't know but i got this 45 picture sleeve signed by two members of the elephant's memory band we have i always get these names gary van syak and also Adam Ippolito. So, there's Adam Ippolito over there, and Gary assigned in the center there. Two members of the Elephants Memory Band. Okay, and it looks like the last one I have for this particular video is another, another Denny Sywell back from this past March at the Fest for Beetle Fans again. He signed the Ram album cover. And I know that there are other autographs that I found, uh, forgotten, I should say, or that I couldn't find. I was looking for a couple, and I couldn't find them right now. And I just wanted to get the video done, and I hope you had some fun with it. And uh, talk to you soon on my channel.